during the search hiring season right now, everybody is preparing for the upcoming interview, especially product design, product sense interview. It's actually really difficult to crack. And today, I had the pleasure to invite our guest, Yu Meng. She's the product manager at one of the largest companies in UK. But our background, she was a photographer and film director and also DJ. And, but she successfully became a product manager. And today, we're going to have Yu Meng to demonstrate what the best methodology to crack those product design product case interviews so that you're ready to land your next PM job as well. Hey guys, this is Dr. Nancy Lee, a direct product and feature in Forbes. I've helped thousands of people land a dream PM job offer in fan companies and unicorn startup and continue to get promoted as a product leader. In this channel, we cover tech trends and product management training. Like and subscribe and check out a new video every Tuesday. Hi, Yumon. Welcome to the show. Thank you, Dr. Nancy, for the invitation. Awesome. Awesome. So I know uh, you had great success transitioning from our background into PM. And also, thank you so much for sharing all your knowledge with all of us today. So now let's do our mock interview. Today, I'd love to ask you this specific question. Please design an exciting experience for Spotify. Sure. Uh, may I have two minutes to organize my thoughts? Yes, go ahead. Thank you. Yeah, um, before I start to solve any problem, I actually want to mention Spotify's mission, which is gave uh, not only artists the ability to live with their art business, but also to enable uh, listeners a uh, enjoyable and forgettable experience. Um, so right. we want to align. Thank you. Uh, we want to align any solution with our mission, not go against it. Uh, may I proceed to the next? Yeah, sure. I think it's, it's a great point that you brought up the mission. Thank you. Apart from our mission, we also want to think about uh, what are the current situation. For example, at the moment, we are still in a uh, recession period. Many companies and small business, such as uh, artists, are affected by this uh, economic uh, situation, uh, which means artists and enterprise, they are saving costs. Um, type of budget, but also for customer, there's a downgrade of consumption product, which mm -hmm. means customer and user have less money to spend on entertainment sort of product. I see. Um, do you think this trend will continue or this I is temporary? I think at least this trend will continue uh, a year or so. Um, but we want to prepare, no matter this trend continue or not, we want to maintain this high quality for Spotify and also for our, our end user. We want to uh, align with the current situation. Great point. Great. Yeah. How would you really help them to face those kind of challenges as, we've, as they were stepping into right now? So combined with the mission and also the current difficulty with our uh, users, we want to maintain this high quality offering mm -hmm. on Spotify and uh, remove their difficulties uh, while they are using Spotify. So yeah. I, I want to start with knowing our customer segmentation first. Yeah, exactly. So um, tell me, what do you think the customer segmentation should be? To keep it high level, there are roughly three uh, customer segmentation. The mm -hmm. first one is the listener of fans, uh, which include uh, people who listen on ca uh, Spotify casually, uh, and also people who actually really focusing on their music taste. They create a, a, a playlist. And also we have people like family. The whole fam family uh, all have this uh, Spotify membership and kids uh, like our young old Audience also can find the program or music they like on Spotify. Mm -hmm. um, going forward to the second segmentation is the curator. So not only we have musicians at the moment on Spotify, but now we also have podcasters, audiobook readers. We also have this new um, course learning experience. We have lots of teachers who can teach you skills uh, on Spotify as well. So this is the second category, creators. Um, awesome. The third the third category uh, would be enterprise um, users. For example, uh, agencies who manage multiple um, talented talented uh, musicians or podcasters. Also, we have marketeers who uh, work with a Spotify platform or uh, curate, uh, cur curators. Um, they want to 
monitor how their um, uh, advertisement penetration. Eventually, we also have people um, who are event managers because on Spotify, you can look at different musical events. So that's our third category, enterprise customers. Wow. I didn't know Spotify has all different kind of crazy activities already, including events. Now, this interview question becomes even harder given they have so many ex- exciting features, but how to make it even better and more exciting. And hopefully there's more problems um, for us to solve, or maybe they solve all the problems. Perfect, perfect. And also another quick plug-in, you mentioned Spotify also have lots of podcasts and we just launched our Product Insider podcast. You can search Product Insider podcast by Darkness City on Spotify, Apple, and Google podcasts right now. And you guys should check out over there. Very exciting. Okay, so now, so, um, Yumo, now we know this customer segmentation. What do you do next? So ideally, we want to solve all customers' problems. But in reality, we want to uh, prioritize and laser focus uh, in uh, one or two uh, problem area. And also, uh, we want to better utilize our resource. So first, I would like to uh, prioritize uh, different segmentations. I would use uh, three different areas uh, to mark which uh, customer we should prioritize. The first one Mm -hmm. is impact, the impact of this uh, customer. And the second one is size of the market. How how large is this user group? Mm -hmm. Then eventually we want to look at the urgency of this user group. Will it affect our uh, business immediately if we don't solve uh, this customer segmentation? Okay. So tell the me method- more regarding uh, tell me more regarding impact. You mean what do you mean by customer impact? You mean the Spotify's impact to those different customer segmentations? Whoever has the biggest impact, that the ones you want to prioritize. Am I right? Um, I think it's the which customer segmentation have more influence on our overall business. For mm-hmm. example, uh, fans have absolute impact and creator also have great impact because fans came to see creator and creator are relying on the uh, amount of fans on our platform. So these two are absolute dominant factor of the impact section. Okay, great. Uh, now you talk about the top three factors to select which customer segmentation focus on. So which one would you choose? Um, usually I would give a score one to five. So one meaning low impact, five meaning a uh, high impact. You mm-hmm. can see here fans have five out of five and um, creator have five out of five as well. Enterprise customer have slightly lower impact, which is two. Then when we came to size of the market, we know that we have fans, which is uh, five out of five and cre- we have less creator uh, on the platform, of course, which is the four. The enterprise, we have only one uh, as a score. Eventually, we also want to add on the urgency of this segmentation. So let's say if we lose fans or creator, which is very bad for the platform, f- the platform will no longer be attractive. So fans, I give it a five. And creator, I gave it a four. Then enterprise customer, I gave it one as score. Um, we want to add and calculate all the score together. Whichever have the highest score, that will be the segmentation we want to prioritize. Mm-hmm. In this case, it will be fans, which is a uh, 15. Great. Makes so much sense. Now, let me see. So basically in your score, fan is the highest for everything. That's why it's prioritized. I see. Okay, cool. Let me ask you this question regarding creators. You know, so even if the size of market of creators is, is smaller, and I also feel like lots of small creators, they do not get exposure in this place. So in that case, do you think we should focus on creators or still go back to fans? I think we should, uh, at, at this stage, we should still uh, focusing on fans. Uh, because fans are the uh, segmentation who contribute to our um, revenue the most. Then curator, we can um, come back to curator. We need uh, further investigation and uh, also to see how can we uh, make this small and upcoming creator have more exposure, which is need more investigation than the first one. Perfect, perfect answer. Tips for people watching this mock interview. She had the perfect answer when they challenging her. her. Perfect. Okay, Thanks. so let's continue. <laughs> this perfect. I did it on purpose. This is amazing. Uh, everyone hope the learning 
uh, from all of you guys. This is a real uh, simulation between the interviewer and interviewee and how I challenge her. She come back with a very great answer. Okay, so let's continue. Now you prioritize fans. What are you going to do next? Um, so like I mentioned, even within fans, we have a quite diverse uh, fan sub-segmentation. So we also want to look into those categories and also prioritize them. Um, mm -hmm. So here we have casual listener, music curator, and also a family member and family uh friends a membership sort of user um here i want to use the same uh sort of category impact size of market and urgency to evaluate which one should we laser focus and best utilize our resource so first we have the uh impact uh for casual listeners, which is uh, slightly slow because within casual listeners, uh, some of them are unpaid freemium members. And within our music creator, most of them, they are super serious about music. They work and live with Spotify. So I will put a four as impact. Then eventually family and friends, I give it a five. Why? Because family, friends, membership are all paid membership. Um, so family membership means at least you have two um, paid memberships, so, which is quite high in terms of the uh, conversion rate. So that's why I give it a five. But when we come to size of market, we know that, of course, there are more uh, listener, uh, casual listeners. We have uh, less uh, serious listeners, such as music creator. And we have um, around uh, medium amount of family member listeners. So which why I give it um, five to casual, three to music curator, and four to family members in the size of market. And in terms of the urgency, uh, casual listeners, they have a three because they are quite press sensitive. Once you change the price, they switch to other platform immediately. Also, some of them are freemium. Um, music curator, uh, mostly they are paid uh, memberships. So I will give a four as in uh, urgency because if we don't... Uh, we don't improve this experience is affecting their daily life or work life. So they will switch the platform quite uh, immediately. Then eventually we have family and friends, which I mentioned they have more than two, at least two member within this package. So we want to um, consider their opinions um, very importantly. Therefore, if we add up all the scores, we have highest score, which is family and friends group. That's the uh, category we want to prioritize. Okay, so let me ask you this question. You already make assumptions saying, hey, family uh, groups, they already paid because whenever you have more than two, you need to pay and casual usually they're not paying. But you kind of already make assumption saying that, well, uh, because they're paid, we focus on them first. But are you thinking about maybe we can start to um, make the casual listener become paid customers as well because I feel like you jumped the gun. We're already in pay, so we give them higher impact. But in reality, the non-pay ones, if we serve them better, we can make them a, a paid customer as well. So what's your thought on this, your definition of impact here? Ideally, of course, we want all casual listeners converted to paid membership. Um, but another uh, sort of element of family membership is a family membership, they usually are quite stable. They are a little bit less price sensitive. Once they subscribe, they want to uh, sub subscribe for a year for multiple members. But casual listeners, they are very price sensitive. Once the platform um, is less competitive in terms of price, they switch immediately. For example, I know there's a use case as uh, Spotify and Apple customer are switching between uh, very often. Mm. So that's why we want to focus in on family, which is higher margin and a higher um, impact sort of uh, user group. Okay, cool. And yeah, I'm definitely those kind of casual listeners. <laughs> Uh, I'm jumping between different platforms and when necessary, I, I will pay for a few songs. I see. Okay, great. So now you already prioritize those family groups. How would you design those experiences for them? So first, we want to know uh, what kind of problem and what sort of struggle family is having uh, when they are uh, listening on Spotify. Mm -hmm. So first one is the complex sharing process uh, the Spotify have 
currently. So imagine you have to um, complete uh, three steps and also jumping between laptop and also mobile phone just to include one of your uh, your uh, family member to the membership. So this is a huge complaint item we have at the moment. Secondly, imagine if your household is bigger than six six member, but Spotify only allow you to include six family membership. What do you do the seventh? Do you exclude them from the family? This may uh, kind of cause family uh, issues, fights. Um, I don't think it's a good approach, really. Okay, cool. Uh, what else do you think we can help their experience to be better? Um, so the, I, I want to mention the last pain point is the, the pricing model is not competitive. I know uh, Apple have also have family fl- uh, plan. Uh, they make better offer because they have a um, ecosystem family plan. Not only you can listen uh, on Apple, but other product, they give you a family discount and offer. So here mm-hmm. we also want to um, targeting this pain point for our Swatify listeners. Got you. Okay, great. So among all the different kind of pain points, which one do you want to work on? Or you want to solve all the pain points at the same time? It will be quite challenging to solve all the pain points at the same time. Yeah. But we want to laser focusing on one pain point. Therefore, we need to uh, further um, evaluate this pain point with other categories. For for example, in this Excel sheet, um, I list all the pain points uh, this category have. I want to uh, also, uh, using the same methodology, impact, sets of market urgency. The sharing process is complex. I will give it a five. It's if you can't share, you can't pay, right? It will be a huge uh, conversion rate a factor. Then eventually six member of family only allowed. So we want to address this. I also give it a five. Um, You can't stop your customer having more business with you. So this is a huge um, turnoff, I would say. Eventually, uh, the price is not competitive, um, quite important, but not as important as the previous one. I will give it a four. Okay. As I mentioned, family do not switch easily. Mm -hmm. I also want to mention the sets of market of uh, these three pain points. The first one, sharing process is complex. Um, I think majority of the family user are experiencing this. So I give it a four because the people who have this pain point is large. Then uh, only allow six family member, I give slightly lower because there are not much uh, household who have more than six family members. I give it a two. Eventually, price is not competitive. I give it a four. I, like I said, during the recession, everyone's struggling. So this will be a quite huge factor for family to consider. Mm-hmm. Oh, urgency. Um, sharing process is very urgent. If um, you can't uh, really share, you just basically, it's quite annoying for, for the end user to experiencing this uh, roadblock. So I give it a five. Only allow six family member to join. I would give it a two because, like I said, not much um, family member uh, are having six uh, in their household. So eventually, we have the price. Uh, I will give it a three. Um, pricing we can always adjust later, but it's the um, other issue which involves development work uh, have slightly more um, difficulty to implement. Eventually, um, I have um, the first one score 15, uh, 14. Uh, sharing process is complex. Um, and the uh, second one, nine. And uh, price competitive as a 12. Therefore, we want to uh, prioritize the sharing process. Yeah. So let me let me ask you this question. When you talk about the, the impact to the business, so you're, you're assuming, hey, if they can share, they cannot pay. Are you thinking more about from the pain point for the business impact or the impact to the family members, the users or both? I think it's both. If the family member unable to share to another family member to join their um, group membership, they can pay. And as a business, Spotify can't really receive the payment as well. 
Mm-hmm. So it's the middle process blocking both of us. Got you. Okay. Another question is that we're talking about designing exciting experience for Spotify, right? So why do you think sharing is that exciting for us to solve sharing problem? You know? Yeah. Um. Then I have to mention music. I, I think music is an experience you want to share, you want to experience together, and music also related to memory. And uh, especially for family and friends, you sort of can have this experience once upon time. You go to this concert and listen to this musician together. It will bring you really good memories and happy memories. So that's why we want to keep this experience exciting and happy. Um, Eventually, that's why we want to design exciting experience, keep this platform exciting. I see, because the sharing is a part of the way to show the excitement and make the excitement even like triple the impact because they have lots of people to share together like uh, something uh happiness times if many but two people share happiness happiness become double and two people share sadness has sadness become half something like this towards the, the term i think it's a phrase in america about that cool yeah, exactly also you make friends because you like the same type of music I see. Cool. All right. So now let's continue. And so you want to solve the sharing pain point. And what would you do? How to solve it? I have brainstormed some solutions in terms of this issue. So the first possible solution is we uh, implement tap share. Tap share is a feature which you can uh, have to phone devices, then you just tap two devices together, then you complete the share. No need to uh, type anything or jump between website and phone. Uh, you just tap two devices together. You are in a family membership. You so mean that's just the, uh, sharing the family membership, the subscription sharing, or you mean sharing the music as well? You can do all of them by tap. Okay, basically sharing by- everything by tapping. Yeah. Very but cool. here we want to we want to focusing on the share join membership this uh, feature. Mm-hmm. But cool. share music will be also available once mm-hmm. we uh, implement this. Cool. So what other ways do you want to solve this problem? So the second way is utilize Spotify's AI capability. People always joke about uh, actually um, Spotify is an AI company because each year they uh, Spotify know what sort of music you listen to and who you interact with. So we want to use this um, user data to know actually who is this person's family member and friends. You don't even need to input. We have a list of guests. You just need to tap and include who you want to share this membership with. So it's a very user-friendly uh, feature, utilize our resource. Very cool. Yeah, um, I-, I can see how much data they know about us just based on our music taste within Spotify. Awesome. So uh, what are the ways to solve this pain point then? Uh, eventually, we have a more practical way to solve it, uh, which is having a code. Basically, you have your unique code. You can share this code um, to your family member. They just need to input within their form. They don't need to go to the website and jump back. Just a code input in your uh, personal profile. That's it. It's done. Very cool. So you have top three solutions. Do you want to implement all three? Due to the resource allocation, and uh, we we actually need to further analyze these solutions. For example, some solution may have some uh, trade-offs or risk we want to discuss with our um, leadership team or maybe engineering team to uh, address the effort of it. So I would like to further um, sort of investigate and evaluate all three solutions. Okay. Um, so we are an interview now. Which one would you think we should focus on right now if it's 45 minutes interview? I have another framework, which is showed in this uh, Excel. I want to list all the solutions and think about engineer effort, effectiveness of this solution, and the risk of this solution. Some corner cases we may encounter when implementing. And eventually, we want to think about how easy to implement this uh, solution. So the first Mm -hmm. one, tap share. Um, here, one to five, if the um, solution is low engineer effort, low um, high effectiveness, we gave a high number. And yeah. if risk is high, we gave a high number as well. 
You mean risk is low, you give a high number. If risk is low, we give a high number. I see. What kind of risk do you think would involve for tap share? I think tap share because it's a family membership. Uh, the person that you you pay together. Let's say your phone gets stolen. You have this feature. Oh, your phone uh elsewhere, not in your um sort of um not in front of you. People may use this tap share because they they will be involved payment sort of uh, personal information. There might be information leak. Because the sharing is quite easy. I see. I see. But you give a score of four. Does mean that there's what happening is low risk, even if there is some kind of risk, like what you described. So even though we have this risk, we can always um, have some um, uh, features or limit set some limitations when sharing. For example, we can uh, we can know when we are sharing. We can know that oh, actually these two devices, these two Spotify account have interaction. Then we allow this share. If they have no interaction at all, we don't allow this share to protect the customer's data. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Great. So tell me more regarding ease of implementation in your table here. What do you mean? Um, so some feature may sound very uh, desirable, but in terms of implementation, there might be difficulties uh, such as um, laws or uh, different um, um, engineering effort, um, etc. So we want to know is this easy to implement? Is this something uh, feasible for our team to do it? How is it different from uh, engineering effort? Um, engineering effort is only one uh, sector, only uh, how, how hard it is for our engineer to uh, implement this feature. But easy to implement may uh, sort of um, related to multiple apartments, such as is it easy to market? Is it easy to uh, pass the regulation, et cetera, et cetera. So it will be a more um, complex factor we want to consider. Very good. Cool. All right. So now with all of this, which one do you think should be the number one solution? Um, so based on the score I gave to all different solutions, um, tap to share and uh, code to share have very high score. Mm -hmm. Therefore, I want to consider tap share. Um, even though it's quite it, only one point um, higher than the uh, code share. This is all based on assumptions, right? So the score yes. is very uh, close, like tap share and code share. Um, how would you be assured that tap share is the best because they're only one score difference from each other? Sure. So code share is a very uh, practical solution, but we already have many different uh, similar uh, software company or even competitors implement this solution. So it's not really uh, uh, innovative and new. But TapShare is a very new feature. Uh, for example, Apple released it quite recently. We can, we can use this to uh, market our product and gain more attention by releasing this product, but also uh, solving our family members' uh, pain points. So that will be a win-win solution compared with the code share. Very cool. Okay, great. If you want to do tap share, can you design your MVP? What does it look like? Yeah, sure. Um, I have some sketch uh, layout over here. Um, so tap share, like I mentioned, it will be super easy. Um, Two users have to open their Spotify, then uh, two users have to uh, approach their phone together. Then eventually you will saw a two pop-up push window saying you have been uh, invited to this family membership. Would you like to accept? Then when the other user click accept, everything is set up. So you don't need to do anything or go to other platforms. Very but, cool. Uh, like I said, there will be a second uh, corner cases, which two devices um, have no interaction at all. So in this case, um, the other device will uh, say, oh, you can't share because you don't have any, or you can't accept because you don't have any further interaction. Are you sure you want to share? Or are you sure you want to uh, join the membership? Very good.
Okay, great. Cool. Thank you so much, Rimon. Let's recap this case and provide some feedback. I think you did very well solving this case. And what I like uh, is that whenever I challenge you, you can come back with a very great answer. I uh, love challenge. <laughs> <laughs> I think challenge is a part of my uh, PM day-to-day -day work. Um, you challenge by peer engineer leadership and marketing colleagues. You have to have, you have to challenge yourself first. And then later on, when you are challenging by other people, it won't be a challenge. Awesome. I love this. So that's why I have another video with Yu Meng talking about how she transitioned into product management with the artist background, and also how she does very well in her new job and actually continuously getting promoted uh, with all great kind of opportunity in the company. And check out this video right here. Uh, so now let's continue with, with our feedback of the case. And by the way, I want you to pay close attention to how she responds to my challenges. She, her response is actually very good. Uh, each time I was like, mm? I don't say it's going in the right direction. You say her response is great. Okay. Um, another thing what I like about her uh, uh, interview process is very organized with very strong framework and guided. And we have lots of training on our YouTube videos regarding the perfect framework for you to crack the product design, product case interview. Feel free to check out all the videos right here. And many sample of videos we're also going to put in the description of this um. Uh, video as well. I also like your customer segmentation. It's very good. You talk about the listeners, creators, and different kind of third-party people who are playing important role, uh, like enterprise customers on, on this platform. So now small improvement for your answer. When you describe your framework, sometimes you merge them. For example, urgency. Um, urgency was really means is do they want to solve the problem yesterday? Um, but when you talk about, well, is urgency is high, you say, oh, because a lot of people are also using this. But is it a lot of people or is urgency? You merge the two into one. So you need to make it very clean. Urgency means they want to solve the problem yesterday. And a lot of like size market means say like, lots of people. But doesn't mean that size market is high, urgency is high. So they are not really purely related at all. So do not like jump between framework when you describe this framework. Okay. Now, another thing is like, about excitement. I, I, whenever you come back with my challenge regarding exciting experience, I think your your um, defense mechanism is really good. But I prefer you you bring bring this up early because the whole time I was thinking, is it? I don't think exciting, exciting. That's why I ask you. What if you can make it really exciting for me at the very beginning? Well, wow, this is the music. So sharing sharing is loving. So we must share, and then the sharing experience is very horrible. Everything on the music is exciting. The event exciting. Podcast is exciting. Everything exciting. By the way, Product Insider Podcast is also very exciting. You guys need to search on Apple Music and Spotify to listen and Google Google Podcasts as well, okay? And then all those content is exciting, but whenever you want to share, you want to listen while the, the operational things make it less exciting. So therefore, to really enhance the excitement for the entire platform, I like to dive deeper regarding what's making it less exciting right now. And then you can lead to like sharing process, right? So this will become much more smoother and you bring it up front earlier, you convince me at the very beginning and then, oh yeah, it makes so much sense. And then your argument will be, this sounds great, like what you described earlier. Cool. I see. So to really pitch myself, my solution at the front of the uh, interview, right? No, no, no. You don't tell them the, the solution up front, but you can talk about the excitement. For example, when you bring up your idea saying, hey, there's a pain point regarding sharing different things, but I ask you to design exciting experience, right? When you brought up those pain points, you can talk about, well, this is the important pain point because the content is exciting, but sharing process is painful. And it's not exciting at all. Everything else is exciting. So therefore, I need to like really improve the sharing process so that enhance the entire end-to-end -end process. People feel very excited on Spotify, right? So you bring this up at the, the pain point stage. So bring up early for me to understand why this is linking back to the keywords exciting. Yeah, understood. Thank you so much for the advice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, just just... Do it early and link back to the topic uh, early. But in general, this is really the case. And I believe lots of people will learn a lot from your mock interview. All right. So everybody make sure to check our video with Yumon where she share her insider information regarding how she transitioned from artist, photographer, filmmaker, 
DJ and become a product manager in one of the largest companies in UK. And I believe all of you guys can do it as well. Check this video right here and also download our Product Insider podcast. You're going to see lots of VP of product from Google, those very exciting people on our podcast as well. And, and make sure to like and share this video with other product managers out there. This is Dr. Nancy Lee from PMSRator.io. I'm going to see you in my next video right here. See you guys. Thank you for joining us. Bye. Thank you, Dr. Nancy. Bye.